Woo! Hey, my name is Dr. Knott, and this is Sorcery from Steven Jackson. We're still on part one, uh, but we're getting it to Kari here. In fact, we are going to Kari right now. Let's go. Oh, wow. All right, we're zooming out. Your journey through the Shamuchanti Hills is completed. What? Along the way, you have made no useful friendships, but I've been given the key to the gates of Kari. You have collected no magical artifacts. You are armed with a long sword and your original sword, and I have one ration and 17 gold pieces in a spell book. Wait, have I not equipped that long sword? Oh my god. The adventure continues in Sorcery 2, Kari, City Port of Traps. Out now. Wait, no, but we have it, don't we? Should I save to the cloud? What does that even mean? What? 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 Alright, save to the cloud. Uh, Sudadi. Let me write that down. S-U-D-A-D-E. Alright. I guess we're starting part, <laughs> part two. Watch out. What happens? The crown of kings has been stolen by the archmage and taken across the backlands to Mampang. You have been sent to get it back. Should you fail, the whole of Kachabad will surely fall. A journey began. From the outpost settlement in Analand, you cross the Shamutanti Hills. Along the way, you face the pranks of trickster elvins, survived a meeting with the witch Aliana, and fought and killed the dreaded manticore. You face starvation and disease. A test of character. To survive, you used your blade often, and your intelligence frequently. You deceived, charmed, and tricked your way through. Your spirit guide changed as you changed, becoming the ape. But now, all of that seems a distant memory, for you are approaching Kari, the city port of traps. Founded on a ford of the Jabaji River, Kari was once a camp for the pirates who ambushed merchants sailing from Lake Lumli to the sea. But the camp grew. It became a village, the village became a town, and now Kari is a magnet for narrow do wells and thieves, ruled over by a council of villains. Let the city do its worst. It is a place of treachery and traps. You will have to be constantly on your guard as you cross. Your goal is the North Gate, the only entrance to the Backlands, and the next stage of your journey. If your quest is to succeed, you must enter the city port of traps and make it out alive. This is massive city. All right, we're in part two. Hey, ho. Steve Jackson's Sorcery. Part two, and we start at the South Gate. Part two, Kari, City Port of Traps. So one thing I wanted to do here quickly is I want to see if we have our actual weapon equipped. Can I like, is it auto equip? So I think it is, I hope it is auto equipped, I don't know. We have that. Treasure-wise, we've got 17 gold pieces. Spellbook-wise, it's just the normal deal. Keys, we've got... Kari Gate Key. It is the key to the Gate of Kari that you were given by the Svin Chief. And we have a Rusty Key. Rations, we have one meal. That's it. So, let us uh, zoom out here. We're at the very bottom part of the map. What am I supposed to do? Begin. Wait, no. No, I don't want to rewind to beginning. What am I supposed to... What am I doing? Alright, clicking on myself. There we go. Twilight already. The great city of Kari has loomed large on the horizon all day. It has been slow to reach. The path tracing great loops back and forth through a deep and narrow pass. There it is. There it is on the horizon. Let's walk on. You have not seen a living soul since you left the Sphin, so you are naturally cautious when you round a bend in the path and see a beggar, crouched low against a rock, muttering to himself.
You stop, out of sight behind an outcrop. But the beggar does not look like much of a threat. Just talk to him. You call the greeting and stride over, and the man leaps to his feet, drawing a short stick from inside his cloak. Who goes there? he demands. What's your business in Kari? I am a traveler. The man pokes his stick at you. A traveler? Traveling where? Kari. Obviously Kari, but why? He prods harder. Answer me, or you'll face the consequences. What consequences? Better you don't find out, he replies darkly. I am the city guard. No one enters Kari except through me. And then, despite his age and clear ill health, he comes at you waving a stick. I won't fight you, you tell him. You are unarmed. He waves the stick close to your face, jabbing a few times. You push the point aside with one hand. All right, then, he declares. We'll settle this fairly. He tosses the stick to one side and raises his fists. The knuckles are blackened with scabs. I still won't fight you, you reply. I mean it. The beggar makes a short braying noise, like a laugh, and then lamps you on the nose. He is surprising, or pff, it is surprisingly painful, and he is readying for another swing. I'm just gonna punch him. Oh, we're we're, we're doing our fisticuffs. All right. Sighing, you roll up your sleeves. In a fist fight, damage is lower and power refreshes more quickly. Yeah, let's just pulverize this punk. Oh, we blocked! Oh, the beggar is not a powerful opponent. You should be able to easily overpower him. So you begin with a heavy punch, giving it everything you have. A heavy hit is more likely to win the round, but will leave you undefended and weaker next turn. Yes, I know. The beggar lifts his fist in defense, so you land the minimum amount of damage against him. He puts his guard up. A strong attack would be wasteful now. A light jab will do as much damage and save your power. I got you. Let's just block. Oh, we're just we're sitting here blocking, huh? You defend yourself. The beggar also defends. No one is hurt. But both of you will have more power next turn. He raises his fist. I think this means he has less power overall. Let's just keep blocking and we'll get our... Oh my god. Alright. You defend yourself again, building up your power for next turn. The beggar also defends. You circle each other nervously. He lifts his guard. Let's go. Damn it! You tense your biceps and swing with a strong arm, rushing for the beggar who is defending. You could have played a lower attack and saved more power for the next turn. He moves up his fists. He's just defending the whole time. Alright. Let's see what happens. He's just defending. Alright, I think I know what we're going to do here. You hold your weight back a little and swing with a medium hit, going for the beggar, who raises his defense. Prepare to see stars, he declares. You better put him up. We got him. Nice. You level a powerful blow, overpowering the beggar again. The beggar pants and groans, and then collapses into the dirt. No stamina lost. Perfect punch-up. You roll your sleeves back down. All right then, he murmurs into the ground, weakly waving a hand. You can pass. Holding out a hand, you help him upright. He sits up and dusts down his tattered clothing. A gray cloak that was once a uniform. He is shivering. The evening is drawing in, and it must get cold out here. You don't have any food, do you? He asks sadly. Uh, no. You lie. The man sighs and shakes his head. No matter then. There's plenty of meat on a grass bowl. If you know how to nibble him. You take pity on the man. Come with me. I'm going to Kari. The soldier considers you your offer for a moment. You sure? I know the word for the wall, but they will not let me through the gate. I'll see to that. He clambers slowly to his feet. A gleam of hope has entered the poor man's eyes. Very well then, stranger. I'll trust you. Yeah, let's get a friend, you know? Let's get a friend on this. The beggar walks a few strides ahead, the ghost of a military pace in his step. What's your name, you ask? Captain Thomas of the 4th Legion, responsible for the southern perimeter. He knocks his bony heels together. At your service. What are you doing out here, soldier? We were sent out to investigate sightings, he replies, still panting for breath. A whole legion of us, back when the council felt bold. But then they locked the gate and wouldn't let us back. Where is your legion now? He won't answer. He just shakes his head and points sharply downwards. The path winds through gorse and thick grass, 
Shikari squats in a basin in the hills like a stagnant, festering pool. You turn one corner, then another, and then the stone walls of the city are looming over you. The walls weren't built to keep anything out, Thomas says. They were built to keep people in. Kari is one gigantic trap itself. Why, you ask? Are the people inside not happy? Would you be happy, ruled by pirates and thieves? He points. Cast your eyes up. You can see them, archers, facing in both directions. You could scramble up the slope to the right to get a better view of the wall. Yeah, let's go up. Let's go up. There's no reason not to. You scramble up the slope for a better view of the wall, leaving Thomas below. It seems your new friend was right. Standing atop the huge stone blocks is a guard with a longbow slung over his shoulder. You keep watching. The guard above the gate looks this way and that, but doesn't shift from his position. Run for it? No, no, no. I want to go. I want to go with Thomas. There is nothing else for it. You put up a hand and call out. The archer lifts a hand to shield his eyes against the sun. Who goes there? He bellows. Friend or foe? Friend, you cry. Ho! Is that so? The archer shouts back. Then what's the watchword? Thomas leans over and whispers to you. Cantopani. You nod, but before you answer, you pause. Can you trust this man? I'll just do it. Cantopani, you call. The guard considers this for a moment, then lowers his bow. Approach, he calls. You have found one new clue. What does that mean? One new clue. Am I dolphin now? Or that's my uh, spirit animal? What does that mean, one new clue? Huh. I don't know. Approach the gate. The south gate stands before you. It is as tall as two men, and would be broad enough to ride three horses through, if only it were open. But instead, it is locked, and there is no other way into the city. Luckily, of course, you have a key. Over to you, says Thomas, stepping back. Just, just unlock the gate. You quickly remove the Sven Chief's key from your pack and slip it into the lock. The tumblers click as the key turns. Thomas hangs back. Good work. But do you think it's safe to go through? Let's wait, you say. Thomas nods. A few heartbeats pass but you hear nothing from inside the yard. Then he shakes his head. I'm going for it. Thank you, stranger. And with that, he dashes away inside. You hear nothing for a moment. Then the sound of shouting voices and feet rushing away. Slipping inside, you find the yard deserted. The old soldier has cleared it out for you. You push the great gate closed. Key still in the lock. Whoever the next ruffian to visit Kari may be, you will be grateful for your little gift. You pause just inside the shadow of the gate. To your left is a low stone building with metal bars for windows. So we got duck behind the building, hurry out of the yard, try the door to the low building. Um, Let's duck behind the building. You hurry over to the wall of the building and crouch down. A heartbeat before two soldiers come round the corner. The building means you're covered, but if they spot you, you'll have nowhere to run. Perhaps using magic might give you an advantage? I don't know. Let's find out. I don't have any, like, useful items. So I could zap, I assume that's what that is. Zap. Free stamina. Create lightning. I could do that. Let's see what else we could do. Or we've got... Whoa. Mud, which, uh, I can't do that. Creates quicksand. That would be helpful. I need sand to do that. Or we've got... Cell. Reads minds. I can't do that either. Shall I just create lightning? Is that what I can do? What's P? P O. Creates explosions. It requires a pebble to create an explosion? I don't even have a pebble. Or pep. Ugh, okay. Well, I'm gonna do zap. Let's just do it. I don't know if we can electrocute those two. Free stamina, but let's do it. Zap! You cast your spell, building a charge of electricity in your palms. Then you wait until the two guards are in a line. With one lift of your finger, both are instantly vaporized. Oh, did not mean to do that. You straighten up and hear a noise through the barred window of the stone building. A sneeze? 
Standing on tiptoes, you peer in between the bars. Not a storehouse, then. The building is quite bare, except for a wooden bench on which an old man is sitting. You wave at the window, but the old man doesn't look up. He seems to be staring very determinedly at the bench, or perhaps he is asleep where he sits. Yeah, let's just dink around, why not? You go over to the door of the building. The key is still in the lock. Turn the key and lock the door. I just killed two people. Whoops. The small room is dark, lit only by the narrow barred window. It takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the gloom, so you don't notice that the door has swung shut until you hear it lock behind you. The old man who is watching sniggers with contemptuous glee. Oh, for the... Why do I do these things? Let's just talk to him. We're locked in here now. You step towards the shadowy bench. Greetings, old man. He ignores you. He is concentrating hard on something on the ground just in front of him. A collection of small stones scattered as though for a fortune telling. After a moment, he gathers them up and tosses them again. You notice that his other hand is missing completely. The left sleeve of his tunic hangs limp by his side. You step over to peer at his stones, but he snatches them up quickly into his palm. If you want to play, he says defensively, then you have to bet. Play what? Why, the man replies with a shark-like grin. Swindle stones, of course. Swindle stones, you ask, intrigued. Stranger in town? Don't know how to play? Better and better. He shows you one of his stones. It is a strange, four-valued die. Sit. He pats the bench beside him with one hand. Play. We can talk while I beat you. You'll have to teach me the rules. My lucky day, he grins with his one remaining tooth. It's easy. We, we each roll our dice in secret, but we bet on what we've rolled in total. You call if you think the other player has bid too high. The loser gives away a die. You go over to the bench intrigued. It's like liar's dice with two people. All right. The old man drops four dice into your palm and sweeps away a patch of dust on the bench for you to play. I'll go first, he says, waving his hand. Show you how it's done. So, each player has a set of four-sided dice, which they roll and hide. Players then bid on the amount of times a face value has been rolled across their own dice and their opponent's dice combined. Yeah, this is like Liar's Dice. Bids get higher and higher each turn. For example, two ones, two twos, three ones. When one player believes their opponent's bid is too high, they can call to challenge the bid. The dice are revealed, and whoever loses the challenge loses a die. Losing the last die forfeits the game. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> the game is simple. Okay. We roll and bet on what's come up. So, for instance, I might start and bet that between us we've rolled at least two threes. Okay. But we don't know what's on the table, so I'm guessing. Make a bet on the combined dice held by you and the man. Can I only collect? I can only do this. I can't change that. Oh, I can. Here we go. For some reason, those didn't work. Oh, here I can. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so I think there are gonna be two fours. No, 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 no. No, three ones. Let's do three ones. <laughs> Indeed so, I can't see your dice and you can't see mine. You have only so he thinks there are three fours. I've got one, I'm calling him on that. No! There are four fours. The old man wins around. Alright. I didn't bet anything today. So what's your name? Wait, am I answering this? So I'm gonna I'm gonna bet there are Two twos. Doomed. Well, I don't why? Okay, but so he bet. Wait, two threes. He bet two threes. I'm gonna bet two fours. Hope he's got one. Three twos. Call him. What? Ah. This isn't working out. One four. 
what two fours? Okay, three fours. Let's call him. Haha, I got one. Punk. God, if I rolled two of the same number, that'd be so helpful. So let's do um one one of these. One three. I'm not even reading this text, I don't care. I'm like too much into this game. He's saying one four, so I'm gonna guess two threes. He's saying two fours. I don't have a single four, so I'm calling him on that. Assuming he doesn't have two. Alright. It's kind of hard to read. That looks like a four to me at first. Alright, we're catching up. We're catching up. I want two of the same number. That'd be so... Damn it. Two ones. Oh. Uh, shoot. So now if I, if I bid three ones... So this one... I've got one. He just needs to have one of his two. I bid three ones. It's assuming that I have two of them. If he doesn't have one, then he knows that I win. So I think doing this... Oh, I don't think that's... Uh, that was tough. Okay, now I'm in a, Now I basically lost. I don't see how I can win this. Here, let's just do one three. <laughs> One four, so I'm gonna go two fours now. And he knows that if he doesn't have it, then wow, he did that. Are you dumb? That's dumb. This is like this last round is too stupid because he's gonna yeah one four. I mean, how am I supposed to? If I do this, he knows that. If he doesn't have a three, I lose. I have to call it. Like, but that'd be so stupid not to do. I mean, yeah. What am I supposed to do? All right. Good, you win, buddy. That's the game. The man says with a beaming smile, and you lost. The old man pockets his dice once more and stretches back, cheerful at his victory. I thought you were a bit slow. Thanks for the game, you say, standing once more. I see I have a little to learn, still to learn. Pleasure was mine, the old man says, putting his dice back into his pocket. He leans back against the stonework and hums quietly to himself. Talking to people will provide clues to help your quest. You can review your clues on the inventory screen. Okay. Clues. The watchword for the wall is Kantopani. So I want to talk to people, even if I get... screwed. Let's try to escape. You go over to the door, locked of course, from the outside. You dig through your pack for something to pick the lock with. We have nothing suitable. You try the tip of your sword, but it is, of course, far too long. After a few minutes of frustration, you give up. The old man laughs at you. Might as well try using your nose, he remarks. Uh, do I have a spell for this? D O P. Oh. Ah, uh, sucker. You aim the spell of opening towards the door and slowly, quietly let it go. The lock's rusted tumblers click over in response. Very good, very good, the old man chuckles. Let's check outside. You check outside. The yard is empty. While you have been locked up, the sun has sunk below the wall. You should be able to walk right out of here under cover of darkness. The old man is less cautious. He's up and out of the door like lightning. The old man is spry despite his age and is quickly far ahead of you. You seem to be forever rescuing old men, first from the tree outside Kantopani, and now from prison. Okay, well, that's a great start. Let's see how much of this we've actually done. Next to nothing, there's so many... Why are there dots here? Interesting. So much left to do in Kari, City Port of Traps. But we will continue next time. So, thank you for watching. We're now Spirit Animal Dolphin. And I'll see you next time. Take care. And goodbye.